Merry Christmas to each and every one of you here. It is a joy and it is a blessing to see you here this Christmas Eve. As a church over the past few weeks, we've been preparing and anxiously awaiting Christmas and the celebration of the birth of Jesus. During this Advent season, her focus has been on the messages of the, that the angels delivered to many of the key characters in our Christmas story, to Zechariah, to Mary, to Joseph, and to the shepherds. Additionally, we have spent time remembering and paying attention to the many angels that are in our own lives and the messages that we receive from them every day. Tonight, let us take some time to put aside our busyness and simply be in the presence of God. Tonight, let us remember that holy night over 2,000 years ago. Tonight, let us reflect on the many signs that God gave to those present at that first Christmas and the sign that God, signs that God still offers each of us yet today. Let us pray. Good and gracious God of love, you have brought us together tonight and blessed us with your very self. Open our eyes to the light of Christ, which glows in the darkness of a world that often is in darkness, Lord. A world that can be separated from you. Speak to us now that we may have the good news to share with all whom we meet. Light the light in us so that we may share that light with others. Amen. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Each week, I have shared an acrostic poem, and I'm going to share those with those of you who didn't get to hear them. I'm not the best poet, but it does help me remember things. So we had a different theme for each Sunday. The first Sunday of Advent was hope. And for that, we thought about, talked about holiness, openness, patience, and we had an extra E. We had two E's, expectancy and excitement. The second week, our focus was on peace. And we talked about the people in our lives and that it is encouraging, the appreciation we have for God, calming and the enlightening message we get. The third week with our children's pageant was joy, and it was full of joy. Jesus, open and yearning to know. And today, our focus was on love the loyalty of God to us and Jesus to God, the offering of love to all people, the importance and the value, the next one was valuable, how each of us are valuable in God's eyes, and that that love is out there for everywhere, everyone and everywhere. We had two E's again. Those E's are good. And today, instead of another poem, let us just remember what Jesus is. And all that Jesus is. Jesus is hope. Jesus is peace. Jesus is joy. And Jesus is love. Tonight's gospel lesson from Luke is one that is known by many and offers us all a familiar story that welcomes us home at Christmas time. While we may hear this story every year, for me every year I'm still touched and changed by the words of that story. <clears throat> the story is what sets the tone for all of Christianity. It began with just a tiny little baby, a tiny baby born to a young mother and a young father in a place that was not the best, at a time that was not the best. But tonight, let's focus not only on this trio, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. But let us also focus on the signs and the messengers that made the sharing of their special story even possible. I invite you to put yourself back a little over 2,000 years ago to that holiest of nights. Picture it. Your shepherd out in the field tending to your sheep. 
The sky that night is brighter than it has been in a really long time. And then all of a sudden, it got even brighter. It got so bright. And in that moment, you might have thought that those angels and that light, that was the sign. But that wasn't the only sign. Because often when we look for signs, what do we look for? The big, huge, blow up in the sky sign. Not the little ones that we get every day from people. So there was a sign, but the sign that came even more than the bright sky and the angel chorus was a sign through the message of those angels, the message to those shepherds, the message of all that was possible, of the love that was possible for each and every one of us. In a flash, that message was delivered, that more love could be found when we least expect it, where we least expect it, and possibly where we already have it and just don't notice. The message that the sign of God's presence in the world was to be found in a tiny newborn baby lying in a feeding trough shows us how powerful and how powerfully vulnerable God can be. When God offers God's self in this form, rather than a giant, powerful king that comes to ravage the world, but instead, a simple little baby. And not only that, but God sends that message, the first message to the shepherds, who are often seen as the lowest of the low. They were not well respected back then, they were often seen as dishonest, that they would have their, their sheep feed wherever they wanted, whether it was their land or not, they did not care. So that God chose this unlikely, this marginalized group to get that message. The most important message that God offers means a lot. Can you imagine what those shepherds must have felt when they got that message? Now, most people didn't talk to them unless they were being mean to them. So when they received this message, they listened. They paid attention. And as soon as those angels left, what did they say? Let's go find out about this Jesus. They were changed. They were changed by a simple message. Someone showing them love. Someone showing them respect. The angel... In this story, they are storytellers. They deliver that message. They tell the story to the people. They tell the story to us. And the best part is once they told that story to the shepherds, and the shepherds saw it with their own two eyes, they became the storytellers. They took on that role of messenger. And people listened to them. People were surprised that they knew this. These lowly, marginalized, often forgotten people were now the deliverers of the most important message to all the world. They mirrored what those angels did. They were changed people. They saw love. They felt love. They shared love. They were the messengers of joy. I pray that beyond today, that beyond this Advent and Christmas season, that you will continue to pay attention, pay extra attention to the angels that are serving as messengers and be incans of God in your life, in your family, in your community, and throughout our world. I encourage you to seek out opportunities to also be messengers, to be angels, to help other people's lives better to give more hope, to give more peace, to give more love, and to give more joy. I encourage you to continue to seek out ways to be an angel. And if you need help, I've got a few more wings up here to share. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, 
May your light that began at creation continue through the witness of the prophets and has come to fullness in the birth of Jesus. Be in our hearts and in our minds tonight and throughout our week, Lord. As we go from this place, may our spirits be filled. May we be energized to share your light, to be your angels and your messengers. Amen.